Welcome again, and, and for the last two weeks, I've been laying a foundation on how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I've carefully and uh, meticulously given you a good foundation on why the Holy Spirit baptism is necessary, why it is important, uh, what the Holy Spirit baptism is. Praise God, we took a, we've been looking at what the Holy Spirit baptism is not. And we've been trying to teach the church that it is so essential, so important, that we be filled with the Holy Spirit. We cannot, you cannot, no matter how charismatic or how dynamic you might be, you cannot accomplish God's will without the Holy Spirit in your life. And I say this to, <clears throat> to any listener, those listening by way of the recording, you cannot accomplish God's will without the Holy Spirit in your life. And we took time and laid the foundation to let you know that every believer has the Holy Spirit. Every believer has the Holy Spirit. That's when you get saved, you have the Holy Spirit in you. And the Holy Spirit come, enters into you to live in you. But we're going the next step, the next step in these four weeks, we're talking about being filled with the Holy Spirit. So we want you to know, first, first of all, from jump, every believer, when you're born again, you receive the Holy Spirit. And you cannot receive the Holy Spirit unless you're born again. So I'm going to repeat that. When you are born again, you receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit enters into you and lives in you uh, because Jesus promised the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised the Holy Spirit. That is how you and I develop a love for Jesus. That's how we develop a love for the Word of God. That's how we develop a love for worship and prayer because of the Holy Spirit in us. Jesus said, I will send you the Comforter. He will teach you. He will guide you into all truth. So every believer... Upon being born again, you have the Holy Spirit in you. Now we're take, taking you to the next step that uh, the Scripture says be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now that you have the Holy Spirit in you, that's why you have a heart for Jesus. That's how you, you have a heart uh, to uh, come to Bible study when you'd rather be doing something else. That's why you have a heart for prayer when with an urgency comes upon you to heart. To, to pray for someone, it's the Holy Spirit in you. And now we're taking you to the next level as the Holy Spirit leads. And uh, the le next level is be filled with the Holy Spirit. We're going to ask Sister Karen Herzog to lead us in prayer at this time. Heavenly okay. Father, we thank you for the ability to come together today. Um, and we ask that your, your Holy Spirit be present with us today and to empower Dr. Carter in this, this mighty teaching um, and to, to be your vessel to bring that message to us. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, amen. Karen. And we welcome everybody who's online with us. And um, I'm going to mute a few people so that we... Do not hear their background um, challenges. Okay, praise God. And so we've been carefully laying this foundation and making the distinction that you must be born again in order to have the Holy Spirit. Number two, every believer has the Holy Spirit inside of you. Number three, let's go to the next level. Ephesians 5.18 says, be not drunk with wine, and which is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. And it's in this area, this third level, uh, where we run into some opposition, and there's a lot of confusion because Satan has really messed a lot of people up. And uh, the church, uh, part of the church believes in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and many do not. Why? Because of the confusion that Satan has placed Upon the church, he found an area, an opening to start confusion. And because Satan has found a lot of believers who would rather believe him than to believe the Bible, 
And then you got half of the church that they don't believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that is why the church is powerless, ladies and gentlemen. The church today is powerless. It should not be powerless. The church today is operating in lack of power. God has power for the church, but the church does not operate in the power that God has designated to the church because the church does not believe in the baptism. But many of us who believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we have, have uh, the power. We operate in the power. We have seen signs and wonders. We can lay hands on the sick Yes, yes, yes. There are times when you have to just forget about being uh, socially distanced. And if you have to lay hands on the sick, you lay hands on them with the belief in the Scripture that they shall recover. That's the Holy Ghost anointing. It is not you healing somebody. It's the Holy Ghost using your hands. Or if God says, uh, get a, a prayer cloth and, and, and send someone a prayer cloth and, and uh, give them the Scriptures, uh, that go along with this um, Acts 19, 11, and 12, they shall, be, they shall recover. And so many of us uh, send out prayer cloths, and we've got reports of people being healed by using prayer cloths. And the church is missing out, ladies and gentlemen, on so much of the good things, the great things, the God, the glorious things that God has for the church because of unbelief. And so I thank God for this uh, course. I thank God for uh, this uh, addition to our, previ our uh, previous semester that we've closed up. I thank God for C.K. Lewis down in um, Austin, Texas. C.K. challenged us to teach on the Holy Spirit baptism. And I thank God, and we're seeing results. So tonight we're looking at, at part three on how to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Next week we will close out this series and close out the semester. Next week will be part four on how to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Then we will take a break. We will take a break probably until the Lord gives us another assignment for a series of classes. But if God doesn't give us an assignment for a series of classes, then we're going to uh, just um, um, put our regular weekly Bible study on hold until September. But I think God's going to raise up some more courses because we need these teachings. Uh, there are a lot of things that we need uh, after we learn about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We're going, to need to have, we're going to need to learn how to operate in these gifts. And so I can see that we probably will be expanding this series uh, on, on how to operate in the gifts so that we do things decently and in order. Ladies and gentlemen, we must do things decently and in order. I've seen many people in the church, people get filled with the Holy Spirit, they run off to the races, they refuse to be taught, they won't come under uh, instruction, and they bottom out. And in, in their process of bottoming out, bot bottling out bottoming out, they take a lot of people down with them. So we want to do things decently and in order. We want to do things according to the scripture, and that's the way we intend to roll. So we thank God for you uh, for attending tonight. Jackie Carter is in the uh, chat room, and it's uh, such a joy and a blessing to have her with us. Dr. Jean Bratton is in the chat room also. We're going to ask... Um, one of our readers, someone to, let's start with Mark chapter 1. Let's turn in our Bibles to Mark chapter 1 or download Mark chapter 1 where we meet John the Baptist baptizing in the Jordan. And Jesus is coming on the scene. And let's start. I'd like someone to read, a volunteer to read Mark chapter 1. Verses 7 through 13. Uh, the reader, please identify yourself before you read. I'll do it, Pastor Carter. Praise God. Praise God. Mm -hmm. 7 through 13, Mark yep. 1. I'm reading from the King James Version. And you said verses 7 through 13, and yes. it reads, And preach, saying, There cometh 
one mightier than I after me, that latch of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And it came to pass in those days that Jesus Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in the Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered unto him. Praise God. Thank you, Dr. Gene Bratton. Thank you for reading those words. We find John the Baptist. What I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is take you step by step through a portion of the, of the New Testament and show you the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the promise, the actual uh, baptism, how people receive, and what happened when they receive. Okay, then at the end, close of, at the close of tonight's meeting, we're going to receive the baptism of, of the Holy Spirit. We're going to receive this, and we're going to rejoice in God. And then next week, we will talk about uh, what happens after you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, what happens after you're filled. So I'm excited about tonight. We want you to just uh, stay, stay in tune, stay on board, and you might want to get the recording later on tonight or tomorrow. Go over the recording. Go over it over and over again and get these scriptures in you so you can really see the progression of what God has given to us. So we see John baptizing in the Jordan. And you may say, well, what was he baptizing for? He was baptizing for the remission of people's sins. People would confess their sins, and John would baptize them. In other words, John was setting them up for Jesus. He said, mm -hmm. uh, one, there's one coming mightier than I. I can't, I can't even tie the latches off his shoelaces. I indeed baptize you with water. So John was baptizing them because they were confessing their sins, and they were confessing they needed to be nearer to God, and they were sorry for their sins. So John baptized them. But John's baptism, listen to this, John's baptism did not save anybody. Nobody received salvation through the baptism of John. And the scripture backs this up because the scripture says there's no other name under heaven whereby men can be saved other than the name of Jesus. So John baptized people. Remember, he said he was the forerunner. He said he was the voice crying in the wilderness. Now, this was a man sent by God, um, and uh, he, he was a forerunner. There had been no word from God for the last 400 years. And God raised up John the Baptist. John the Baptist came and told the people, "You're sinners." He told—I mean, he's—he—I mean, he laid it out there. He told everybody, "You're sinners. You need to repent of your sins. You've sinned against God." And um, and many heard him, and he baptized them upon their confession of their sins. But that baptism did not save them. That baptism just uh, prepared them for. The Lord. Remember, John's uh, um, Malachi said that he would he would come and he would be saying, "Prepare ye the way of the Lord." Uh, he would be the forerunner. And so, uh, John says in that eighth verse recorded by Mark, "I indeed baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost." And so, uh, we can stop there and underline that scripture. And realize that the Holy Ghost baptism is a promise from Jesus that he will baptize believers, followers. You may say, well, Pastor Carter, it doesn't say everybody. It, says, it just says those people around the Jordan. No, see, that's where a lot of you get confused. A lot, a lot of us have been trained by ignorant pastors. We've grown up in ignorance. Um, uh, mama might have been ignorant. Dad might have been ignorant. Uh, Bishop so-and-so ignorant of the scriptures. And we've grown up 30, 40, 50 years of ignorance deep down in our souls. And a lot of people read the scripture and still will rely upon that ignorance in their spirit rather than to be enlightened by the, 
the Word of God. But my Bible tells me that every word of God is pure and that he is a rewarder of them that seek him. My Bible also tells me that the, the Word of God is uh, quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of the soul and the spirit, the bone and the marrow, and is a discerner of the intense thoughts and intents of the heart. So it is time, high time, high time, past time, for the church to come out of the, the depths of ignorance and hear the word of God and believe. It's time to hear the word of God and believe the word of God and act on the word of God. And many of us need to begin to act on this eighth verse of the, the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter. I indeed baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And, and uh, for people who are not baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, you ought to be asking yourself, well, I've been baptized with the water. Uh, uh, why can't I be baptized with the Holy Spirit? And then uh, many people who have been deceived by false teachers, false prophets, many, many out there who have been deceived by by ignorant leaders in the church, you need to break away from their ignorance and just declare, I refuse from this moment on, I refuse to walk in ignorance. I want to know about this Holy Ghost baptism. I want to know. I want to know if God has more for me. Uh, is this for me? I want to know it. And, 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 and once I know it, I want it. I mean, that's, that, that is the kind of proposition. That's the kind of attitude that gets you set free. That's the kind of attitude that got me set free. Back in 1976, when, when I had been saved for about seven years, but had no power. Saved for seven years, but sitting up in the church, uh, uh, just listening to the church, going through their uh, uh, announcements. Uh, chicken dinners on Saturday, and, and, and and a cakewalk on, on, on next Monday, and, 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 and a prayer band's going to meet uh, on, on Wednesday. And they have five people coming out, and it was called a prayer band. And, 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 and I'm, I'm sitting up there, and my soul, my soul is hungering, thirsting for much more than what I was getting. And, and, and I was a student in seminary in 1976. I was a student in seminary, my first year in seminary, and, 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 and aching and agonizing and groaning and wanting more and not accepting that garbage that was being taught by many of my professors and not accepting the garbage that was coming out of the mouths of a lot of my fellow students because some of them were taking everything coming out of those professors' mouths and running and trying to preach it. And a lot of that stuff was pure junk and was not preachable. And so uh, there was a hunger inside of me. And one day the, the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to go next Sunday to Howard DeBro's church, uh, and I want you to go and get in the prayer line and ask Howard to lay hands on you, and, and, and I'm going to bless you. I'm going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. And ladies and gentlemen, my life has not been the same ever since. The Holy Spirit is real. God has used me to bless people, to get filled with the Holy Spirit, and uh, uh God has, God has shown us signs and wonders. We've walked in miracles. We've walked in miracles. I've been in situations where God says, speak a word to so-and-so, and they'll be healed. And, and, and God performed what the, person, what the person spoke. I've been in situations where uh, when we lived in North Philadelphia, I had no money. I was a seminary student, didn't have any money for food, and, and the month was halfway through. And what little money I had, we had to spend for oil for our furnace, and we were uh, facing two more weeks of being cold in that house without any food, and, and my wife and children shivering, and I'm saying, God, I'm supposed to be saved. Why am I living like this? And, and, and the Lord said, well, get on your knees and pray. And, and we got on our knees and prayed, and the moment, ladies and gentlemen, the moment I got up off my knees, there was a ring on my doorbell, and a family, a family, uh, uh, there was three or four of them out there at the door. They had bags of groceries, and they came in with bags of groceries, and they gave us some money and said, we, we, uh, we knew you needed this. Your house is cold. We knew you needed some fuel. And, and, and we hadn't told anybody, ladies and gentlemen, but the Holy Spirit met our needs. We have seen miracles. I've seen miracle after miracle after miracle. And 
You have, many of you have seen this, and this is because of the Holy Spirit. And God has had many of you walking in the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and you don't may not have even realized it. And so we're not going to stand in the way of people getting filled with the Holy Spirit and getting the maximum of what God has for them. Now, for those who don't wish to uh, study about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I say, hey, well, hey, get offline, go on back to reading your comic books or, or, or watching your videos or whatever. But for those of us who are serious, if you're serious about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you'll seek God. God, I know that I need more. And ladies and gentlemen, there's not a one of you out there who does not know, cannot confess, that I need more. You know and I know. When we're empty, we know we're empty. Uh, when we're faking it, we know we're faking it. Uh, 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 uh. When we know that we don't have what people think we have, we know we ought to seek God. And I'll, I'll be the first in line. God, I need. I need to be filled. I need to be filled again. And let's quantify this and qualify it. The Bible says be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we've been teaching, we've carefully laid over the last two weeks the, the, the groundwork, the foundation, and we've used this term, aorist, A-O-R-I-S-T. Jackie will type that in the, in the chat, chat window, aorist, the aorist tense. It's a tense in the Greek language that we do not have in the English language. In the English language, we have the present tense, I eat my meal. We have the past tense. I ate my meal. We have the future tense. I will eat my meal. Well, the aorist tense is a Greek tense, and 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 uh, it, it it's I I am filled uh, with the Holy Spirit. I am continuously filled with the Holy Spirit. I will be continuously filled. I am be I be being filled with the Holy Spirit. The aorist tense is the tense in which the, many of our scriptures are written, and it's, it means continuous action. When, when the Lord commands us to be filled with the Holy Spirit, he's not, he's not saying one time. He's not saying one shot. He's saying be continuously filled. And as we go through our scriptures tonight, you will see how these believers obeyed the Lord God and got filled with the Holy Spirit, and, and they would get filled again. And they will get filled again. And they will get filled again. Okay. So, uh, somebody read for me from Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. Turn to Acts chapter 1. Download Acts chapter 1. And let's go to verse 8. Anyone, please. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks, Jackie. That's Jesus promising his disciples. Now, this is a, a very momentous time in history where Jesus was on the mountain about to ascend into heaven. He's surrounded by 500 believers, ladies and gentlemen, 500 believers and before he ascends, before he's caught up in a cloud, he tells them, tarry in Jerusalem. Wait for the promise. Wait for the promise. Verse 5, he says, John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days hence. And then Jackie just read, you shall receive power after which the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me and, and all over the world. And so that's a promise that we can go all over the world to be his disciples. And that is why I love, I love teaching people about the online church. The online church. Uh, get a copy of my book, The Online Church and the Great Commission, and see how by the power of the Holy Spirit, through the Internet, we can take the gospel to the whole world. Even with the shutdowns and the social distancing, we can take the gospel to the whole world. By the way, this is a course that we're offering during the interim, uh, uh, inter-semester period of time that you can 
order this course and and uh, it's a free course you can take this course for free the next course if you want to take a course between now and September you can take a free course it won't cost you anything only the, the cost of the textbook I just finished developing the uh, syllabus for this course today the online church and the Great Commission oh what a challenging course this will be Karen Herzog took it earlier and aced the course and uh, Karen uh, you'll you'll enjoy it even more if you if you took it again but we want you to go further with what you're doing okay so uh, Jesus promised tarry in Jerusalem you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit and then when you get baptized with the Holy Spirit when I fill you with my power you can go everywhere that you want to when I fill you with my power and ladies and gentlemen that is the way it, it panned out um, the, the disciples were eager when they heard about Jesus rising from the dead they were eager to go here there hither thither and yon but Jesus said no 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 and and it's a word to you and me God calls you to ministry God calls you to uh, 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 a ministry where you minister uh, to, to uh, pregnant women or God calls you to minister to nursing women or God calls a man to uh, uh, minister the men coming out of prison but before you go forth in ministry get filled with the Holy Spirit get filled let him show you how let him show you what to do and how to do it and 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 uh, uh, get the power get the power and learn how to be replenished learn how to be replenished learn how to go before God ladies and gentlemen uh, with the uh, uh, Ezekiel 37 attitude we when with when the church goes before God as though we are dry bones in the in the desert when we approach God like dry bones in the desert not as some puffed up bishop not as some puffed up uh, televangelist not as some puffed up mega church preacher not as some puffed up diva no when we approach God as a dry bone in a hot dry desert and 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 realize God we cannot do anything unless you baptize us unless you fill us and and Lord I and when we approach God as a church ladies and gentlemen when we look at our brothers and sisters and realize we need one another I need you and you need me and we cannot get anything done unless we connect and the only way we connect is by the Spirit of God God's got to breathe upon us and when churches uh, tarry before the Lord and realize hey we've got to connect we've got to pray we got to fast we've got to study scripture we got to worship God until we connect until uh, the gifts God has given to sister Laurie uh, uh, and the gifts he's given to sister Mary and the gifts he's given to brother John and the gifts he's given to brother Edward we come together when these dry bones come together under the power of God we can do anything all things are possible for the sake of Jesus Christ to his glory and honor that's what's going to make the big difference ladies and gentlemen in the church that's what's going to make the difference in the church after this coronavirus thing is over that's what's going to make the difference in the whole world nation upon nation it's people first of all getting saved by hearing the gospel and then after they get saved getting filled with the Holy Spirit praise God uh, I don't think we ever 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 again be able to re return to that time where people de dependent on the mega church to do their praying for them or the, the the mega pastors to do their Bible reading for them God has us in a place that if we're gonna survive we're gonna have to seek him with a hunger like we have never before Jackie Carter said yeah I like the way you say that a hunger like you've never had before praise God and 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 when we seek God like this God will fill us with the Holy Spirit let's look at some more scriptures uh, Acts chapter 2 1 through 4 
Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4. Pastor Lisa Johnson on with us tonight. Somebody read for us. Somebody read for us. I'll read for you. Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4. Read this, please, Karen. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Praise God. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. The initial baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, manifest in the, in the believers. There were 120 of them waiting on the promise. God, Jesus had told them, wait in Jerusalem. Before you go out to ministry, wait in Jerusalem. Among those were, were uh, uh, the, the original 11 of the original 11 disciples, and they replaced the um, Judas with Matthias. Uh, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there, Mary Magdalene and others. And these men and women were filled with the Holy Spirit. And the way the Holy Spirit manifested upon them, they were, uh, it was like cloven tongues of fire, split tongues of fire came and lit on their shoulders. And they began speaking in, they began speaking in uh, unknown tongues uh, uh, unknown to them and what happened was they had witnesses all over Jerusalem that the people that they um, people who heard them were hearing them speak in their own languages in their own languages and so God enabled unlearned Galileans to praise God in languages that the people surrounding them who were visitors to Jerusalem, understood. And these Galileans had not studied those languages. And later, later on, we learn in Scripture that God gives every believer his or her own prayer language. Now, we're going to be looking more next week into tongues and the gift of tongues. Um, but every believer, every person filled with the Holy Spirit, you must get this, ladies and gentlemen, you must get this. And so we get rid of this ignorance and get rid of that, this contention and get rid of, uh, 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 you know, blow Satan out of the boat, blow him out of the boat, blow him out of the boat. The scripture says every believer does not speak in tongues. So everyone getting filled with the Holy Spirit does not receive the gift of tongues. Read uh, 1 Corinthians 12. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And read where Paul even said, Paul said, uh, 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 I speak in tongues more than any of you. He said, but I very carefully select when I use my gift. He says, I speak in tongues more than any of you. He said, but, but I would rather speak in my natural language so that you can understand than to speak in tongues and cause confusion. And so we need to read our scriptures. We need how to operate in these gifts. And we're going to learn. We're going to take time, ladies and gentlemen, next week. And we're going to study, now that I'm filled, what shall I do? Now that I'm filled, how am I to operate? Now my, that I'm filled, how should I conduct myself? Now that I'm filled, uh, uh, help me walk in humility, Lord. A lot of people get baptized in the Holy Spirit and think they, they got something better than anybody else, and then they assume that attitude, I'm better than Brother John. I'm better than Brother Willie. And what happens? Pride goes before the fall, ladies and gentlemen. Pride. There are no big eyes and little U's in the church. God loves us all. God loves us all. And when we assume that attitude, you know, it's dangerous. It's a dangerous thing to give people position in the church. It is a dangerous thing to give people 
position in the church because some people can't handle the promotions. So we must walk in humility. Now, I'm taking you carefully down this, this line, this train of thought about what Jesus said, what happened on the day of Pentecost, uh, how the uh, disciples believed and received, and then what happened, what happened, what happened. And then the final result is, hey, look, ladies and gentlemen, when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, God has expectations of you, and he will not let you down. And, and um, God will take a very timid person like uh, 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 somebody like Thomas, a doubter, and, and make a bold soldier out of him. God took that doubter named Thomas and took him into India. Thomas stopped the annual parade, New Year's Day parade in India, where they paraded their <laughs> idols down the street on carts. And he stood and he stopped that parade. Oh, no, 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 no. He blew those idols out of the water off, the, off their, yes. their, Amen. Their, their carriages and preached to them Christ Jesus. And ladies and gentlemen, the doubter, Thomas, the doubter, the one who said, I won't believe he's risen from the dead unless I see him and put my hand in his wounds. And seven days later, Jesus walked through the wall. He didn't walk through the locked door. He walked right through the wall. Physically, Amen. ladies and gentlemen, physically, Jesus walked through the wall and walked up to Thomas and said, Thomas, touch me. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. You see, this baptism of the Holy Spirit is something powerful. But then Thomas had to wait in Jerusalem along with Mary, Magdalene, James, Andrew, John, and everyone else until the power came. And when the power came, uh, Thomas uh, went to India and ministered in India, started the first church in India, ladies and gentlemen. And India, the church is still thriving in India. The church is still thriving. And, uh, and, and all the disciples, they went into different areas. Philip went into Ethiopia. Uh, after he converted the eunuch in the desert, he went into Ethiopia. Matthew went into Ethiopia. And... Uh, James, James was, James stayed in Jerusalem, but they took James and said, and the high priest and the priest said, now you stop preaching about Jesus. James said, no, I will not. And they took him to the high place on the, the temple and threw him off the temple because he refused to recant Jesus. And when they threw him off, it still didn't kill him. He's down on the ground, wounded, and preaching Christ Jesus until a man with a, a club came and clubbed him to death. And kill. So many of these believers became martyrs, martyrs. You say, well, I don't want the baptism of the Holy Spirit if it means I've got to be a martyr. Well, the, mar the word martyr means that martyr means you're going to die for a cause. Well, I don't want, you know, there are people in the church, Dr. Bratton, I don't want the baptism of the Holy Spirit if it means I'm going to be a martyr. Hey, look, you're going to die someday anyhow. I'd rather die uh, praising Jesus. I'd rather die preaching Jesus Christ. I'd rather die having made it to stand for Jesus Christ than, than to be a long-living long wimp. Amen. We Amen. got a lot of long-living wimps in the church. We got a lot of long-living wimps scared to mention the name of Jesus, scared to tell people uh, uh, to, to put away their sins, scared and, and receiving anything coming down the pipe. The church is full of a lot of long-living wimps living 80, 90, 100 years old. And, and not making a difference. But, ladies and gentlemen, God is looking for men and women who are going to take the power of God and change the world. This world needs to be changed. It needs to be flipped upside down. And the only way it can be flipped right side up is to have the power of the Holy Spirit working in the lives of ordinary people. Ordinary people, ladies and gentlemen. Ordinary people who are willing to die. For Jesus Christ. Now we got a whole a lot of folks in the, ch in the church. They talk the talk. But they don't want to die. <laughs> I don't know about dying for Jesus. No. <laughs> I love my chicken baby. I, I don't know about dying for Jesus. You know. But look ladies and gentlemen. Jesus died on the cross for us. They hung him high. They spread him wide. And he gave up the ghost for you and me that we might have the right to eternal life. 
And any person who's born again, when you are born again, that means you surrender your life to Jesus. The moment you are born again, you must die to self. You, you surrender to Jesus and receive the life of Christ to live in you. That's the Holy Spirit. And then the Lord sanctifies you, sets you apart to serve him, to glorify God. Our lives are supposed to glorify God, not ourselves. So if you're not willing to, to die for Christ, then you need to reassess who you are and whose you are. I've got to do the same. You know, you know like anybody, like Martin Luther King, King said, like anybody, I like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But there comes a time where you've got to take a stand for Jesus, where you've got to stand in the gap between life and death. And as you stand in the gap, ladies and gentlemen, you, the blood wash, and talk about me too, the blood wash, Holy Spirit-filled person, we've got to stand in the gap between heaven and earth to help somebody get into heaven. And, and there are many of us who might have to pay the ultimate price. But Jesus paid the price for us. He already paid the price for us. So God doesn't want any wimps in his program. No wimps allowed, ladies and gentlemen, because the Holy Spirit ain't a wimp. The Holy Spirit, well, let's talk more about the Holy Spirit. Let's go to what the Holy Spirit did. Acts chapter 4. Let's look at Acts chapter 4, verses 23 to 31. Acts chapter 4. Can we get Pastor Lisa Johnson to read this for us? Acts chapter 4, 23 to 31. Oh. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to, unto them. And when they heard that they lifted up their voices to God with one accord and said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them is, who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For a truth against thy whole, our holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before, before it to be done. And now, the Lord, and now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and, and grant unto thy servants with, with all boldness that they may speak thy word. Verse 30, by strengthening, by stretching forth thine hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the holy child Jesus. 31, and, then, and when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness, the word of the Lord. Praise God, Pastor, Pastor Lisa Johnson. Praise God. You read that with authority. Hallelujah. Praise God. This was right after Peter and John uh, uh, went uh, to the temple, and uh, they were chastised and, and uh, by the, the, the rulers and uh, threatened. And then uh, they, told, uh, they said to the Lord, they called unto the Lord, Now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be threatened. I'm going to be threatened. People are going to try to quiet us down, shut us up, kick us to the curb, uh, close the church, silence our voices. And, and, and they tried that in the, in the original church. Uh, behold their threatenings and uh, help us, Lord, with boldness to speak your word. And uh, Pastor Lisa read that 31st verse. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. The place was shaken, ladies and gentlemen, after the disciples prayed. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, they had already been filled once. We saw this in Acts chapter 2. We saw this in Acts chapter 2. But here again, they're filled again. So the Holy Ghost filling is a continuous action. It's a continue. You get the initial 
the initial filling, where you get the initial entry of the Holy Spirit upon accepting Jesus as Lord, upon salvation. And then when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes in as he desires. Some speak in tongues. Some get the gift of prophecy. Some don't know what they have. They've got to wait until the Holy Spirit manifests himself. But the joy of the whole thing is when you receive by faith, the Holy Spirit has to come. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, listen carefully to me. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. I will come and live with him. And he with me, we're going to have supper together. We're going to have a good time together. But we must hear his voice when he knocks and open the door. The key is opening the door. When you open the door, something has to happen. God must perform what he promised to do. He's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Let's look at... Uh, Acts chapter 4, verses 32 uh, to 37. Uh, Pastor Lisa, you're on a roll. Continue, would you please? Acts chapter 4, 32 to 37. Oh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither said any of the, them that ought of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things com in common, and and with great power gave the apostles witness witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great uh, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands and houses sold them, brought the, the prices and brought the prices of the things that were sold. 35, and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distrib distribution was made unto every man according, according as he had need. And, and Joseph, 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 Joseph. Joseph, who by the apostle was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted, the son of the consolation, a Levite, and of the country of Cyprus, having land, sold it, brought the money, laid it at the apostles' feet. Woo, woo, woo. That's because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> they live, they live. I mean, their lives change. Lifestyles change. You say, well, Pastor Carter, that's communism. Call it what you may. Call it what you may. But you don't have the corrupt hatred and brutality and, and violence and force that the communists and, 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 and the Nazis uh, use. This, uh, it was communal living. It was uh, what I have belongs to you. Uh, my food is your food. Mi casa es su casa. You know, my house is your house. And they took what they had because they were filled with the Holy Spirit. I mean, love exploded. Love exploded in them. It was no longer mine, mine, mine. And, and to see that, to see the opposite of that, you see in Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira, they refused to share everything they had, and they even lied about what the Holy Ghost had given them. They lied to Peter and, 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 and tried to uh, deny that they got a certain price for their property. And boom, boom, they both fell dead at the, the apostles' feet because they cheated. They cheated on the Holy Spirit. They blasphemed the Holy Spirit. They, they uh, lied, uh, lied to God. <clears throat> we also learn that when you lie to another person, a believer, when you tell a lie to another believer, that's the same as telling a lie to God. So we've got to be careful. We'll walk the walk. Let's look at what other apostles did. Let's look at Acts chapter 6, verse 1, 1 through 8. Acts chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. Okay, let's get a reader. Can somebody volunteer, someone who hasn't read already? Pastor Carter? Yes. Can you hear me? I'll I volunteer even though even though I, I read before. You may uh, volunteer. Chapter six, 
Okay. It's chapter 6, chapter uh, verses 1, you said? Through 8. Through 8. And in those days, when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily in the daily ministration. Verse 2, Then the mm-hmm. twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Verse 3, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among ye seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Verse 4, But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Verse 5, And the, and the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Verse 6, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. Verse 7, and the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of the priests were obedient in the faith. Verse 8, and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Praise God. Thank you, Dr. Bratton. Thank you, Dr. Bratton, for the reading of the word, Acts chapter 6, 1 through 8. We see <clears throat> most people remember this passage of Scripture as the initiation of the office of the deacon, uh, the first uh, seven deacons chosen by the church. But we see the apostles uh, had being filled with the Holy Spirit and um, the murmurings. There were murmurings among the Grecian widows and other widows that uh, in, the, in the daily ministration of the food and giving out of the food and, and provisions, <clears throat> the Greek women were saying, hey, their widows were saying, hey, uh, we and our children are, are not getting as much as the Jewish widows are getting. And uh, those murmurings were causing uh, confusion and, 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 and problems. And so the disciples said, hey, look, uh, we're, we're filled with the Holy Spirit and, 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 and we apostles, we must spend more time in the Word of God. That's a message for preachers, message for teachers, message for, po- for apostles. We need to spend more time in the Word and not get our hands tied up with the daily ministration of the food. Uh, in other words, they were saying, hey, let someone else take care of the food bank program. Let someone else take care of the clothing for the needy. Let someone else take care of the, the, the uh, uh, providing uh, rides to the grocery store. Uh, we must spend our time in prayer and seeking God for the word of God. But, but, listen to what they said. And they said this to the congregation. And the congregation had been filled with the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, the congregation had been filled with the Holy Spirit. And we see different people in different offices doing their different jobs or routines as they're led by the Spirit. The apostle said, look ye among you, talking to the congregation, it was a spirit-filled congregation, look among you and find seven men of good report filled with the Holy Spirit. Find seven men. Ladies and gentlemen, now I'm out of, I'm out of the back Baptist church tradition, and, and, and I, I was formerly a Baptist church deacon, and uh, and. How many Baptist church deacons do you know who are filled with the Holy Spirit? Come on, talk to me, Dr. Jean Bratton. Talk to me, Karen. Talk to me, Lisa. I don't ever recall really knowing one. Me either. Not even when I was a deacon. I wasn't filled (laughs) with the Holy Spirit. No, because... You, 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 talk, you start talking about the Holy Spirit around the pastor. The pastor going to uh, uh, roll his eye at you. And, and most deacons there, most deacons were chosen, handpicked by the pastor to do the pastor's That's will. Cool. And me, when I was young and dumb in the church. So I didn't know any better. So I did what the other deacons did. 
until the day came when the Lord set me free from all that. And so, so the apostle said, look among you. Look among you, church. Look within your own ranks and find seven men filled with the Holy Spirit and appoint them to this matter. Now, how many deacons do you know? How many trustees, how many stewards do you know are humble enough to take care of the food program? To take care, make sure the widows have enough food. Make sure the orphans have enough food. Everybody wants to preach. Everybody wants to get that microphone. Everybody wants to be in the leadership. Everyone wants to be seen, but nobody wants to minister the daily ministrations mm -hmm. to take care of the needy. And so we can learn a lot, ladies and gentlemen, by going back to the original church and looking at how the Holy Spirit built the church. Jesus said, on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And as we look at Jesus building his church, even after he ascended into heaven, he's building his church through the filling of believers with the Holy Spirit. That is how you build a church, ladies and gentlemen, not with mega numbers or mega members. You get each person, one by one, filled with the Holy Spirit, and when the person's filled with the Holy Spirit, that person realizes that the power I have is of God and not Amen. of myself. And wherever God places me, whatever he wants me to do, if he wants me to wash dishes on, on, on Saturday after the Saturday meal, or if he wants me to uh, I'll start a garden for Jesus, then I'm going to turn the soil over and grow a garden for Jesus. If he wants to, me to collect food for the hungry or, or clothing for the needy, or if he wants me to go out and minister to the homeless, it's the Holy Spirit who gives us the power to do these things. Now, how many people do you know around you, ladies and gentlemen, who will be willing to go anywhere God sends them and do whatever God says and, not, and risk not being recognized by the church fellowship, not standing up before the congregation, not receiving some kind of plaque, not receiving some kind of certificate. <laughs> Everybody wants to be recognized. And we know how to make certificates. I mean, we can make uh, – uh, uh, today we want to ask little Johnny James to come forward. We're going to give Johnny James a certificate for waking up this morning. Lord Jesus, come on. <laughs> Okay, let's look at Philip, Philip, Acts chapter 8. Let's flip over to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, verse 14. Acts chapter 8, verse 14 uh, through 24. Then, Jackie Carter, can you read that for us, please? 14 through 24. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. When they arrived, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them, they had simply been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given at the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money and said, Give me also this ability, so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. Peter answered, May your money perish with you, because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. You have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps he will forgive you for having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. Then Simon answered, Pray to the Lord for me so that nothing you have said may happen to me. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you, Jackie. Okay, uh, the apostles had gone up into Samaria. Philip went, went 
ahead of them, Philip. Now, Philip was one of the first seven deacons, and God separated him from the other six deacons and sent him to Samaria, and a great work was being done by, by the Holy Spirit using Philip. And so when the apostles, Peter and James and John and others heard about it, they sent a committee up into Samaria to investigate what was going on. And um, uh, they asked them, have you received the Holy Spirit? And they said, um, verse 15, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was not fallen on any of them because they had been baptized only in the name of Jesus. Philip had baptized in the name of Jesus, but the Holy Spirit had not come upon them. So the apostles laid hands on these new believers in Samaria, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So the work of an apostle is very important, ladies and gentlemen. Got a whole lot of folks out there calling themselves apostles. Many of them ain't laying hands on none of, nobody. But they, got, they love that position. They love that to be called apostle. Ladies and gentlemen, be, be careful what people call you. Be careful what you ask them to call you. Uh, we've got a whole lot of people want position, but don't, want the, 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 don't have the humble spirit to receive what God wants for them. We all need to walk in humility. Okay, when Simon, <clears throat> Simon the magician heard that... Uh, the people of Samaria received the Holy Spirit with the laying on of hands. He went up to the apostles and offered them money for the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'll give you some. I'll give you money, and you show me how to lay hands on the people, because I want to. I want to do this to people here, ladies and gentlemen. There are a lot of folks in 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 around the church or attached to the church. They ain't right, as we used to say back in the uh, around two thousand year two thousand. You ain't right. You ain't right. Simon wasn't right. His heart was not right. He was in it for the gain. He was in it for the self-aggrandizement. And so uh, he said to Peter, I'll give you money. Give me the ability to lay hands on people so they might receive the Holy Spirit. He was thinking of building himself a ministry. Okay? Uh, he's like one of, uh, a so-called charlatan who graduated from our back, the basic school of ministry in Kenya. He had come over from Tanz Tanzania. And he was a fake, a phony, and we did not recognize it. Then he went back and cloned, went back to Tanzania and cloned the back the basic school of ministry. But Lord, the Lord shut him down when God exposed him to me. And I told the brothers in Kenya what had happened. The Lord shut him down. you got to be careful who you hang out with and who you allow to hang out with you. If Jesus Christ is not the center, then uh, all of you, in the sound, under the sound of my voice, who have the authority of the name of Jesus, every one of you have the ability to shut down something that is not of God. Ladies and gentlemen, I could expand that and even go as far as to say we could shut down this corrupt government, the so-called United States of America, and all the corruption and the lies and the deception. If the church really wanted to shut it down, I'm going to say that again. If the church wanted to shut down the lies and the deception. But you know what? A whole lot of folks in the church are benefiting by having a liar in the White House, a deceiver, yep. a charlatan, a phony. A lot of folks are benefiting and are gaining from this. But God's got his way. God is bringing this nation to her knees, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I know what I said might have offended some of you, but I, I ain't apologizing. No, I'm not. I'm not. God's got his way of bringing us to our knees as a nation. If we say we're a Christian nation, if we say we're righteous, then we need to act righteous. We need to love one another. You'll find in that first church men and women of power, even unnamed people, unknown people with great power. But you know what they had in addition to that power? They had love for one another. Yeah. They had love for one another. Barnabas had so much love for his brothers and sisters, and many of them poorer than he was, and he was rich and they were poor, like as poor as church mice. Barnabas had enough love that he sold a lot of property that he had so that others could live. 
uh, uh, Peter, James, and John, they sold what they had. They, they, they sold their houses, ladies and gentlemen. They sold their businesses. They sold their property so they can buy food to feed the hungry. That's love, ladies and gentlemen. That's love. Uh, uh, we definitely, definitely need to flip the script here in America and in other nations. And I guarantee you, ladies and gentlemen, Amen. in the name of Jesus, God is flipping the script. Let's look at, um, okay, I'll give you some other scriptures. Uh, you, we're not going to read it tonight. Philip and the Ethiopian. And Philip went up to this African in his char carriage. The man had come out of Jerusalem. He was a proselyte, and uh, he got saved. I did a story on him in my book, Black Heroes of the Bible. This man went back to Ethiopia and witnessed Christ Jesus to the king of, and queen, and Ethiopia became the first black African nation. And uh, how in that latter part of the ninth chapter we see the spirit caught Philip up, and the Ethiopians saw him no more. I mean, there were no airplanes then. There were no helicopters. Philip did almost like a, uh, an Elijah thing. The spirit caught him up and flew him away to another territory. The next thing you know, Philip was spotted in a place called Azotus. Okay? Um, and the Ethiopian went his way into Africa to preach the gospel. This, this whole thing about the Holy Spirit moving in the lives of people. Later, the apostle Matthew hooked up with the Ethiopian in Ethiopia, and they were able to preach, and God sent a great revival to that nation. Uh, the Holy Spirit took Simon of Cyrene, Simon of Cyrene, the man whom the Romans compelled. You pick up his cross. You carry his cross. The, the, the African man whom they made carry the cross of Jesus up to Golgotha's hill, this same Simon the Cyrene went back to Cyrenaica in northern Africa, and the, the, the history says that he, he preached about Christ Jesus to his wife and children, and his wife got saved, his children got saved, and then Paul, Paul mentions them in the 16th chapter of Romans. Paul mentions uh, the wife of Simon the Cyrene. Uh, he called her his mother, and then uh, Alexander, one of uh, Simon's sons, was waiting for Paul and ministered to Paul, and Paul got to Rome. This is an amazing story, ladies and gentlemen, of what God can do with people whose hearts are open to him and who are willing to let the Holy Spirit come upon them. And, 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 and they were willing to let the Holy Spirit do whatever he desired, because they recognized the Holy Spirit was God. They recognized the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They did not put the Holy Spirit in a box as we do in the Baptist church or in the Methodist church. Uh, uh, some don't even recognize the Holy Spirit. Don't want, we don't want you here. Uh, they used to tell me, Pastor Carter, we want you to come and preach on Sunday, but don't bring that Holy Spirit mess with you. Ladies and gentlemen, do not blaspheme the Holy Spirit. God sent his spirit to guide us to where he wants us to be. You may have your aspirations, your desires, your wants, what you'd like to be in ministry. Uh, you may have your own personal vision of what you'd like to do. But God gives the vision and he shows us where he wants us to operate, what he wants us to do. And, and, and one of the contentions or tensions in this whole Christian walk is there are many people who are not willing to surrender their will to God's will. Jesus taught us one of the basic, in, in his basic prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Jesus taught his disciples from jump, yield to God, let God's will be done, and let Whatever God says do, do it. And then he told them, Behold, but tarry in Jerusalem. I will send you the power. And when the power comes, you can do all these things that God wants. But ladies and gentlemen, we must be careful that when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that we make sure 
that we're doing the will of God. No longer can we do our will. Uh, 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 we're not our own. We belong to him. The scripture says, for I am crucified with Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Let me just cover a few more things, then we're going to just pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Acts 11, 15 to 18, you might want to write this down. Acts 11, 15 to 18. Now that, I, give, I, I chose this scripture, the Lord chose it. One reason is to show people, Acts 11, 15 to 18, for all those people who don't want the Holy Ghost in their church, what kind of church you have you don't have the Holy Ghost in it? Huh? A wiki church? A witchcraft church? It's got to be witchcraft because if you don't want the Holy Spirit, you're, you're following some other spirit. And to follow some other spirit is idolatry or witchcraft. Can I get an amen out there? Amen. Let's look at Acts 15, 11, 15 through 18. Ask uh, Pastor Lisa Johnson to read that for us, please. 15 through 18. They see you there. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 1511. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Then rem remember I, the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? When they heard these things, they held their peace and glorified God, saying, Then has God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Pastor Lisa. This is where... Uh, Peter acknowledges to the disciples, Peter acknowledges um, uh, that God had chosen to send the gospel to the Gentiles. After Peter had met with uh, Cornelius and, and great things happened, Peter was convinced by the Holy Spirit that it was time for the gospel. It was no longer an all-Jewish thing. And Peter had to learn that uh, by personal revelation from the Lord that now is time to open up unto the Gentiles. And that opened the door for a great relationship between Peter and Paul and Paul and the other apostles. Because when they heard about Paul, they were willing, they were willing to accept Paul as, as a believer, as, as, as rough as Paul's background had been, been they accepted Paul as a believer, a spirit-filled believer, and an anointed man of God, and they supported the work of Paul. Um, chapter of uh, um, Acts, chapter sixteen, twenty-five to thirty-one. We're not going to read this, but Acts sixteen, twenty-five to thirty-one. Paul and Silas in prison. Paul and Silas chained to the wall in the prison, but the third person of the Trinity appeared, the Holy Spirit. He appeared unto them, broke their chains, set them free. And the jailer, for fear of his death, for fear of his life, realized that he had responsibility to make sure no prisoner escaped or, or, or was taken away. The jailer took a sword. He's going to kill himself. And Paul said, no, 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 don't do this. Don't do this. No. Don't do this. Uh, and Paul revealed Jesus Christ to, to him. And the man said, well, what must I be, do to be saved? Paul preached to him Christ Jesus. And Paul went home, he and Silas, with this man. And the man's whole household received Jesus Christ and got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, this whole first century was exciting times. And there were exciting times in the second century and in the third century and the fourth century and on and on. 
and even up to the 21st century, okay, exciting things are still happening, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting reports almost on a daily basis of Muslims in Arab countries having dreams about Jesus. Nobody preaching to them about Jesus. I've got a good friend in Cameroon. She sent me a text message today. Says she's praying for me and my family and uh, for us to hold on and keep on. And they're doing well. Well, she got saved, ladies and gentlemen, about 20 years ago. She got saved. She had never heard of Jesus. She was from a Muslim background. Her parents forbade her to hear of Jesus, or even to go to church. The Muslims were very strict. She had never heard a sermon, never heard anybody testify about Jesus, but Jesus appeared to her in a dream and revealed himself as the Son of God, crucified and resurrected from the dead, and she got saved through a dream, ladies and gentlemen. Jesus preached to her in a dream. She is one of the most powerful women I know on the planet. She's got a powerful witness. Her father, when she told her father and mother about the dream she had and about Jesus, they chased her out of the house. She grabbed her little son and ran and left her husband because her father had arranged a marriage for her husband between her and her husband. She left him because he was Muslim. And he, they all started chasing her. They put a hit contract on her. They ran for her after her for miles trying to find her. And she was able to escape and, 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 and into a mission. And um, that's where she uh, received her biblical training. And it was there that I met her about 10 years ago in Cameroon. Praise God. So God, God is doing miracles, ladies and gentlemen. Miracles. Miracles all over the world. And then we want to look at one more thing. Acts 19, 11 to 12. Acts 19, 11 to 12. I'm going to ask Sister Karen to read that for us. Acts 19, 11 through 12. Acts 19, 11 to 12. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Thank you, Sister Karen. Thank you, Sister Karen. You don't even see any preaching there. You don't even see any preaching there. But you see a lot of sick folks. And you see people bringing, uh, uh, taking handkerchiefs from the body of Paul. Okay, cloths. Paul would touch the cloths. And the anointing, ladies and gentlemen, the anointing of the Holy Spirit was upon the cloths. And God will use a man or a woman and, 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 and take a cloth, a handkerchief, a kerchief from their body and, and send it to the sick or have somebody carry it to the sick and have them lay that on the sick person or have the person sleep with it or, or just hold that, uh, touch that piece of cloth. And, and God has healed many people, many, 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 many people through this experience. First time I ever saw that happen in, in uh, our, our first church in Chester, Pennsylvania. I didn't know anything about much about the Holy Spirit baptism. I was teaching one night, and a lady said her came came up at the Bible study that Wednesday night. She said, Pastor, my niece has cancer. And she's up in the mountains. She lives up in the mountains of Pennsylvania. She's got cancer. And the Bible says that they took uh, handkerchiefs from Paul's body and, and, and laid them on the sick, and they got healed. So she said, and, and this lady, praise God, Sister Mardella, she's gone with the Lord, and she was a real instrument, real strong uh, encourager in our church. She said, Pastor, I'm bringing, I brought some olive oil. She had a bottle of oil that she brought to service. First time I ever used a lot of olive oil, ladies and gentlemen, first time. And she brought a handkerchief. And she brought a, a, a brown mailing envelope. She said, Pastor, I want you to anoint this. Uh, and the envelope was already uh, labeled. Uh, with the address of the woman, the name and address of the woman she's going to send it to. I want you to anoint this uh, cloth and, and pray a prayer of healing 
and send it to my niece. And the congregation looked at me. We were just a young congregation, young and dumb. We didn't know much. But we believed God. Jean Bratton, we believed God. Your sister was in that congregation. We believed God. And I anointed that uh, uh, handkerchief with oil, put some drops of oil on it, and, 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 and prayed and asked God to do the miracle that he, just like he did in Acts chapter 19, 11, and 12. And, and, and Mardella, Mardella took that uh, handkerchief, put it in, in that envelope, and sealed that envelope along with a note she had written and sent it to her niece. That Sunday morning, that following Sunday morning, we got the witness. The lady received the package. She applied that handkerchief to her body, and she felt a surge of energy go through her, and she went right to the doctor, and the doctors examined her and found no trace of cancer in her body. Praise God. It was the following week or the following week after that. But we got the witness that God healed her. Ladies and gentlemen, this thing is real. You don't have to run it by the bishop. You don't have to run it by the ecumenical council. You don't have to call uh, Pastor Saul to see what he, what's his take on this passage of Scripture. You don't have to uh, call anybody. Just believe God. God is looking, and he says so in his word, uh, Second Chronicles 16.9, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, seeking to prove himself strong on the behalf of those whose hearts are perfect to them. God is looking tonight for someone he can fill with his Holy Spirit to do great things for God. Remember, these are great things for God. We don't do anything for ourselves. We do it for God to glorify Jesus. And so I'm going to just do what the apostles did back in the day. I'm just going to proclaim the Holy Spirit baptism. And, and I'm going to ask you right now, just humble yourself, amen. No TV. Uh, tell the children, grandchildren, just be cool, chill. And we're going to just spend a moment. And uh, we're going to pray, and then we're going to pronounce the baptism of the Holy Spirit upon you by the authority that God has given to me, just like uh, Paul did when he came to the disciples of John, and just like we see Peter doing when he came to the disciples in uh, the new believers in Samaria. And we've got people here tonight been filled with the Holy Spirit before, but we're going to get filled again. And we're going to get filled again. And we're going to get filled again. Why? Because we're going to believe God. How many people? How many people? How many people? Come on. Give me a, 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 a virtual high five. Give me slap me five. Slap me five. Slap me five. Amen. You're going to believe God. Jackie Carter just slapped me five. Gene Bratton just slapped me five. Karen just slapped me five. Lisa just slapped me five. It, it, praise God. Uh, CK, come on, slap me five, CK. Slap the phone. Put on. Okay? We're going <laughs> to believe God. Let us humble ourselves and pray. Father God, we thank you. Bless you and praise you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Father, for your love for us. And now, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that you baptize us. Many will be baptized again. Uh, many for the first time. Uh, many who are listening will be baptized for the first time in the Holy Spirit. Then continue to baptize us, Father. I'm going to pronounce the word as, as, as an appointed and anointed apostle. I'm going to pronounce the word of God upon your people. And, Lord, you said your word will not return unto you void, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Now I say to you, my friends, as you listen, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I'm going to say it again. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now I want you to just take a deep breath and just receive the Holy Spirit just like you received Jesus when you got saved. Remember how by faith you received Jesus as your Savior and Lord? Now take a deep breath. Breathe in. And receive the Holy Spirit by faith. Now let us just thank God. Just thank wherever you are. 
Whichever way you feel like it, I'm going to lift up my hands and thank God and praise him. And just thank him, just thank him, just thank him. Wherever you are, you can mute your phone if you want to. If you don't want anybody to hear you, just thank God. Uh, thank you, Lord. We just bless you and praise you. And thank you, Father. We magnify you. We love you. We bless you and we honor you. We praise you. Thank you, Father, for filling us, baptizing us with your Holy Spirit. We receive this filling in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Now, you keep worshiping God in that vein, in that manner, and thanking God. And then, now, and you know, I haven't even mentioned speaking in tongues. The scripture has a teaching on tongues and a teaching on prophecy and a teaching on knowledge, a keep teaching on wisdom, a teaching on helps and administration. And God doesn't want you to get all messed up, confused, just high, hanging out on tongues. Some of you will get the gift of tongues. You may get it tonight, you may get it next week, you may be get, it, get it a year from now. But the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the Scripture says, the gifts of the Holy Spirit depend on how the Spirit gives them to you. He gives as He chooses. He gives as He chooses. So as you continuously, hallelujah, be filled with the Spirit, and I expect to be filled with the Spirit every day, more and more each day, then you, you and I, we will notice the gifts being manifest in us. And then cultivate the gifts as you recognize it. If you find yourself uh, one morning and you're hearing a strange sound and and you, you say, what is this kind of language? Is this? And you hear something like, grande rabababoke, ikararate. <laughs> You say, what? What is this? And, and, and you hear it. You hear it. It's not an audible voice. It's a still voice inside your mouth. You hear these sounds. And you say, what? What? Then, ladies and gentlemen, entertain the Holy Spirit. That's the gift of tongues. Now, listen. Listen very carefully. Please, listen very carefully, church. Everybody does not get the gift of tongues. <laughs> and I'm speaking to those who do get the gift of tongues or those who desire to get. You ask God. Ask God believing. Now, if you don't get the gift of tongues right away, don't run off all huffed up and puffed up and angry because sister so-and-so, sister Karen got the gift or sister CK got the gift and, and you heard them speaking tongues on the uh, uh, online church no no the gifts I get are God's gift to me for the edification of the body and for the glorification of Jesus Christ and and I am not to be jealous if sister Jackie doesn't get the gift of tongues sister Jackie might get the gift of helps sister Jackie might get the gift of laying hand, laying hands on the sick okay and so uh, the gifts that Jackie gets may not be the same gift I get. The gift that Gene gets may not be the same gift I get. But the Lord loves us so much that he blesses us with gifts of the Spirit so that as we allow the gift to be manifest in our lives by faith, we, the church, are working together, building up the kingdom of God the kingdom of Jesus Christ, God's using my gift of tongues and your gift of prophecy, your gift of healing, your gift of knowledge, uh, 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 your gift of wisdom, and together as a body, we move and we flip this world right side up for Jesus Christ. Not for our own selfish purposes, not to show men that I can speak in tongues. I got a new language. Want to hear me? That's the dumbest thing you can do, ladies and gentlemen. But I've seen people do that. I got the gift of tongues. Want to hear me? And then they go around. They don't know when to speak. Sometimes when you got the gift of tongues, the best thing you can do is shut up. Amen. And then read First Corinthians 12. Read First Corinthians 13. Read First Corinthians 14. And after you read that, you know when to speak in tongues. And when not, uh, uh, you know, when uh, to, to let your family members know that you have the gift. 
because some family, you might have people in your family might not even be saved. So you're going around speaking in tongues, and they think you done lost your noodle, you know, you know, drop the cookie, drop the egg, you know. So be wise as a serpent, meek as a dove, and let the Spirit of God generate the gift in you and ma manifest it. You may have, you may receive the gift of laying on of hands, laying on of hands. So you don't go down to Shriner's Hospital and say, I want all the kids who are autistic, line them up on the wall. I'm going to lay hands on them. So you've got to lock your butt up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen? Or you go to the Metropolitan Hospital and you just walk up to the ICU. And just, I'm here. I'm, 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 the, most, I'm the prophet of the Most High God. And I got the gift of laying hands on the sick. I'll, I, I want access to room 121, 123, 124. They're going to lock you up. You're going to have your own room in the local jail. <laughs> Because of stupidity. But I've seen people do this. I've seen people get baptized in the Holy Spirit and forget whom they serve. The gift is not for you. It is to glorify God. And then, if and I've seen people mess up, mess others up because they didn't understand somebody else's gift, and then they begin talking about that person. So when you talk about the person who's been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you're blaspheming the Holy Spirit, and you're cutting your own head off. So there are times you just be still, keep on worshiping the Lord. If you're not sure what your gift is, your gift may not come right away. When I first got baptized in the Holy Spirit, uh, I had an initial time for speaking in tongues, and then I, couldn't, I didn't get this for, for a matter of weeks until one day I was in prayer, in my house, and my family was out somewhere, and I was in prayer, and I began hearing the Spirit speak. Then I began speaking the words I heard the Spirit speak, and that's how God blessed me to cultivate and develop my prayer language. Then I had to learn how to, when to pray in, in my prayer language, there were times my family was not to know. My kids didn't understand uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay, there were times, and, and even in the church, sometimes I'd want to blurt out something during the church service. But no, everybody in the church did not have the, bapt the gift of tongues. Some didn't believe in it. And so if I opened my mouth, I would cause confusion. And so now that you have received by faith, some of you say, well, I didn't feel anything. You know, it's not by feeling. It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Now it's up to you to worship God. And thank God and trust God and yield to the Holy Spirit, study your scriptures, and stay in the presence of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit will manifest himself. He will manifest himself. Well, bless God. I hope that teaching helped you tonight. You know, it helped me. It took me back way back when and was just like a refresher course for me. And it helped me tremendously. Well, um, I'm going to... Uh, as you stay on for a few minutes, but I want to close out the recording and then we'll ask, answer any questions that may develop. Father, we thank you and bless you and praise you. Bless each and every one in Jesus' name. Amen.